So the first big step, uh, which is probably the most crucial when you're trying to predict an acid-base reaction, is to get out all the species that you have in that reaction. But we have to do a lot of breaking up. We want what is present in water. So if you dump an NaCl, it doesn't stay together. You have to realize it breaks up and put the, the cation and the anion on your list. Okay? Now, some things don't break up. So that's the big part of number one. Okay? List all the ions or atoms or molecules, whatever you happen to have present initially. But when I say initially, I mean after dissociation or something dissolves. Okay? No chemistry has occurred, but the, that dissolving has. Okay? And also don't forget to include water. Any acidic or basic solution is going to be aqueous sort of by definition. You can't do any pH calculations unless it's in water. You wouldn't have the auto-ionization of water. Nothing works unless it's water-based. Okay. Uh, so don't forget to include water on your list. Break up ionic compounds that completely, I did write ionize. I should have wrote, written the word dissociate would have been the, the proper term. Okay. In theory, you should be checking your solubility table. Uh, to see whether something uh, is soluble or not. That's not something that we tend to test you on. It's something maybe in AP you'd need to be more careful with, make sure something is soluble. Okay. Uh, also, don't forget to include that strong acids and bases, they come apart 100%. That sort of goes with the definition of strong, means 100% dissociation or ionization, whatever happens to be appropriate. Okay. So we're going to break those up. Uh, dissociation goes of two ions coming apart. Ionization is when you make ions when there wasn't any beforehand. Once we generate this big list, we're going to label uh, species as acids. I always like to label the acids on the top, and I'll, label, I'll put a B underneath the basis. Okay. Anything that is neither an acid nor a base, I'm not going to label at all. Okay. It's neutral. Not in terms of charge, but I mean neutral in terms of pH, is what this neutral means. Okay. It's not an acid or a base. Then we've got to use our table. We need to find the best of our acids. What is our strongest acid? The higher up you go on your table, the stronger the acid. So this SA is still on my table. That stands for strongest acid. Way at the bottom is WA for the weakest acid. So as we're going up, these are all these are all weak, but they're getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Okay. The best of the weak acids is oxalic acid. Okay. Now when we get up here, it, it's a big tie. Okay, so these aren't really in order. They're a tie, but all these weaks are in order. The worst acid is water. Okay. On the base column, to find the strongest base, we're going to use the ordering, but it's the opposite order. The strongest is now way on the bottom, SB. Strongest base is the one strong one, which is the hydroxide ion. All these other white-shaded bases are weak, and they're getting worse and worse and worse. And you always see this inverse between a weak acid and a weak base. The better the weak acid, the weaker its conjugate. So that's the best weak acid, the strongest weak acid, and that's the weakest weak base. As the acid gets weaker, the, its conjugate is getting stronger, opposites to each other. The extreme being water and hydroxide. Water is the worst acid, hydroxide is the strongest base. So you always have that opposite. Once we've figured out uh, the strongest, all, the only reaction that's going to occur is between the strongest acid and the strongest base. Everything else is just going to act as a spectator. So we're going to write the acid-base reaction for the strongest acid reacting with the strongest base. Just sort of going up to our list again, you know, these strong acids we're going to break up. Okay. All these weak species, we're not going to break up. They don't ionize or dissociate 100%. Okay. And the weak ones are going to ionize. Okay. They don't do it 100%. We leave them together. Okay. So hydrogen iodide, we're going to ionize. Strong. Okay. Hydrofluoric acid, we're not going to break up for a list. 
Okay. It's weak. It's Ka is 10 to the minus 4. Okay. It barely breaks up. When we do our math, we don't even, we drop the x because such little the HF breaks up. So that's why we're going to leave it together on our list. Okay. Okay. Now we're finally going to use, way back, I introduced multiple types of arrows. Well, we're finally going to use those to denote how uh, forward the reaction goes. If the strongest acid is above the strongest base, okay, the reaction happens more than 50%. So I'm going to put a sticky on hydrofluoric acid. Okay. If hydrofluoric acid reacts with hydrogen carbonate, okay, and if, that, if those two were our strongest acid and strongest base, we've got the acid above the base, and the higher up you go in the acid, the stronger it gets. The lower you go down in the base, the stronger it gets. And when, when the acid is above the base, the reaction happens more than halfway, 50% or more. Could be 100, we just know it's 50% or greater. The extreme would be if you take hydrochloric acid and you take sodium hydroxide, okay, that's greater than 50%, and it's so extreme, two strongs would be 100. If it's the other way around, if the strongest acid, okay, hydrogen cyanide, okay, if that reacted with fluoride ions, okay, now the strongest acid is below the strongest base, it would happen less than 50%. Okay. And often it's less than one. You only know less than 50, but I don't want you thinking 40, 30. It's often like a tenth, a hundredth of a percent. Okay, a, a, you know, a fraction of it will occur. Okay. Now, you certainly do not have to memorize these steps. I'll never ask you, what's step four in the predicting process? You'll have to predict a reaction. Okay. You might have a question where you have to do math, and at first you have to predict it, and then you can write, write an ice table under the equation. Or you will get a question, which of the following happens more than 50%? Okay. A, B, C, or D. Or you might have predict the reaction in a circumstance. You have a whole bunch of equations, and three of them are wrong, and one of them are correct. Okay. So I'm going to focus on step one to make sure we're good at writing, getting our list going. And then you're going to, you'll have high success if you get that list right. Okay. And then we're going to do some practice. I have a bunch of examples, and I'll do as many as I think you need. And at some point, I'll have you uh, solve the examples, not me. So we're just looking at step one for this slide. What would I add to my list based on the species here? Okay. So I have perchloric acid. So I think, what would I add? So we have to figure out, is that strong or weak? You should be memorizing that list of acids, and it is on that list, and it also happens to be on your table. You remember Cl halogen O3 or O4. As long as it's not an F, they're all strong. Okay. So that's a strong acid. So I'm going to entirely break that up. I'm going to ionize the H. Okay. So the H is going to come off. The convention in this unit, it's how your diploma is written. So it's how probably every teacher in Alberta is going to teach it. We're going to have you use hydronium instead of H+. Okay. Either is technically correct. H plus or H3O plus. They're both used. This is the best picture, okay? The hydrated hydrogen ion, but this older form is still used, okay? Just without an extra water, okay? So either one's technically okay, but this is what this whole course is written on. Sorry, this is what this whole unit is written on. So slightly annoy us when we go to redox chemistry, they're going to use the short form in this course. So I'm using that form, and what's left over? ClO4 minus. And it's in water, so I'd have to make sure I add water to my list. You know, it's aqueous. So that's the pieces, the uh, ions or molecule I'd put on my list based on perchloric acid. If I had hydrofluoric acid, you should know your list, but it's right on your table. It's weak. Okay. So it does not ionize any appreciable amount. So I'm going to leave that together because that's what happens in water. It's 99.9999% together. 
Okay. I made up those nines. I didn't do the math. Okay. Why am I saying that? A, it's weak, and B, it's Ka 10 to the minus 4. So hopefully, you know, you're thinking that's barely occurring, barely going forward. Okay. And we're always going to include water. Okay. Now, we are doing a list, so we don't want redundancy. Don't put the same thing on your list more than once. Okay. Every now and then you'll get a reaction that two chemicals produce chloride. Okay. You just put it on your list once. Okay. We're also not putting count on our list. So if something dissociates and gives us four chlorides, just put chloride on your list. A couple more, calcium hydroxide. Okay. Now this isn't very soluble, but kind of ignore, I wrote aqueous. If you look at your table, it says it's insoluble, but some of it will. Okay. So I'm, I'm ignoring the low solubility of this. It's an ionic compound. Anything that's ionic, break it up and look at the two pieces. So I'm going to break it up to calcium ions and hydroxide ions. The fact that we get two hydroxide ions doesn't affect my list. I'm just doing a list of what's present. Okay. Okay. And again, this is something we'd have to be cautious with. Uh, it's not very soluble. So I could only put a tiny amount of this in solution and see this dissociation. Uh, and One last example, ammonia. That's a weak base. Okay. It's a pretty strong weak base. You know, it's close to the bottom, but it's still weak. So it's not going to ionize to a high degree, so I'm just going to leave it intact. I'm not going to ionize it and throw in water. Water's rarely going to win. Water will rarely show up in our balanced chemical equations. If we look at what water beats, for the acid water, it beats nobody. There's no acids below water. So as an acid, water beats nothing. As a base, water beats nothing. These aren't really bases. They're conjugates to strong acids. Okay? You can put them on your list, and you'll still get water beating them, and it'll still work out. But if you're asked, is chloride a base? No. Is it the conjugate of HCl? Yes, which is a bit of confusion. I'll call it the, a conjugate of HCl, but it's not really a base. So let's start doing all of these steps for a few examples. Okay. So I'm going to predict the acid-base reaction for lithium hydroxide and hydrofluoric acid. So we're trying to generate our list, then label our list, and then find the strongest. So lithium hydroxide, is that a, you know, we're going to have to do some chem 20, almost science 10. Is that ionic or molecular? Pardon? It's ionic. Metal and a polyatomic. Okay. So that's ionic, so we're just going to break that up and throw the pieces on our list. Okay. We're not, we should be double checking that it's soluble, but you don't need to do it the way this course is written. Okay. Uh, HF, okay, that's a molecule. Okay. We should be seeing, is that strong or weak? We did it already. It's, it's on the weak section, so we're going to leave that together because that molecule is a weak acid. Okay. The, there's not, it's not ionic to break up, and it's not a strong to ionize. So I put lithium ions, I put hydroxide ions, I left the HF together, and then I added water to my list. Okay. I like to put water on the end. You don't have to do it that way, but that's how I'm going to do every example. Now I'm going to go through and do some labeling. Because I teach this and I've memorized a lot of this table, I kind of know what's there. I can do it fast. For students, it's going to take you time because you're not used to where things are labeling. But I tried to give you some strategies, some things that are never acids or bases, and one of them is group one and two ions. So as soon as you see, that's a group one ion. So you're not even looking for it in your table. Okay? There's no positive metals in that table. Hydroxide, you, hopefully you're not looking at your table. You know that's a base. 
the best one you've got. HF, hydrofluoric acid, is an acid. We don't care whether it's strong or weak. We're just labeling what we have. We got water, which I should label. Is it an acid, a base? What's our table saying in terms of what it could be? Could it be, is it listed as an acid on our table? Yeah, it's listed as an acid, okay? It could be either one, okay? And we're gonna see, does it win? Okay? And it's rarely gonna win, but it's amphiprotic. It could be either one. So now I've gotta find my winners, okay? So what do I have? I have HF, I've got water, I've got water as a base, and I have hydroxide. So I put a sticky next to each of the chemicals. Okay. The highest up acid is the strongest. So that's HF. It's higher up than water, which you can't really see under my desk probably. But wait the So HF is my strongest. Okay. Now, I use SA. I don't mean strong acid. I mean strongest still weak, but it's the strongest we have. In terms of the basis, we've got to use the opposite. Can we got to go down to find the strongest, and we have the best there is. We have hydroxide. So that's going to be our winning combination that I'm going to build my equation off. So step one, two, and one was the, was the list. Two was the blue lettering, and step three was finding the winners. Uh, step four is writing the equation, and then five, is it greater or less than 50%? So I just pulled down my base, I pulled down my acid. The order doesn't matter. Most of the time you see acid first, base second, but that's not a rule or a law, and don't get tricked by that on an exam if it's flipped. So, but most students should write it the other way. Now you've got to use bronze lowry theory to do your predicting, or just use the conjugates right in your table. So there's our base, that's a proton acceptor. Okay. So you don't have to write this, but you should be thinking that transfer. Acid proton donor, base proton acceptor. So our hydroxide turns into water, and it's not a coincidence that it's the conjugate of our base. Okay. Our acid is gonna turn into its conjugate also. If you kind of get into a bigger biological molecule and it's two minus and you're losing track of what's the charge, does it go up or does it go down? If you just you know, find it on your table, just the other species is the conjugate. So that'll, that'll help you. Okay. I'll remove the losers from my table. Does this happen greater than 50% or less? Acid above the base, it's greater than 50%. I'm just going to do a bit more pieces to this. I've answered the question, but I want to connect some previous uh, concepts we've done. Conjugate pairs. This is exactly what's in the table. We've got one pairing is HF and F minus, which is this guy and its conjugate. The other conjugate, we've got hydroxide as a base. So I'm going to write that second and water is the acid. So those are the two conjugate acid-base pairs from this acid-base reaction. Okay. Our math is going to be a lot easier to do than what you saw in a qu the quiz today. Acid-base reactions are always one acid plus one base makes one conjugate and one conjugate. So it's nice, simple, repetitive ice tables. Last, I could write the equilibrium law expression for this. Kc equals, oh, we've got water in an aqueous system, so we've got to make sure we, we drop water whenever uh, it shows up. So we've got F minus fluoride ions, hydroxide ions, 
and HF. And where we're going to go in the next lesson is to get that concentration. If you know pH, which means you know pOH, you can solve for that. So pH measurements are going to help us solve our ice tables in the lesson I'll probably do first thing tomorrow. I'll do one more probably. Predict the acid base reaction of vinegar. Now vinegar, I'm using its common name. I wouldn't use this on a on a test. The IUPAC name is ethanoic acid, or another trivial name is acetic acid. And your data booklet has both of those. So you could see the word acetic acid on your exam. It's middle-ish. Here, acetic acid and ethanoic acid, the IUPAC. So in terms of building our list, I'm doing this example. It seems really easy, but it's so small that sometimes students get confused by its simplicity. There's one thing. You're going to put ethanoic acid on your list, and then you're going to remember to put water on your list. If you forget the water, you get stuck. But as long as you remember the water, you'll, you'll be okay. So there's our ethanoic acid. There's water, which is amphiprotic. Strongest acid, well, I don't even really need the table. We've got ethanoic acid in water. Water beats nothing, so I don't even need to check the table. This is going to beat water. If I look at our basis, water against nothing. The only base we have is water, so that's the only circumstance that water will win and be the strongest base when there's nothing else. So the reaction going on in vinegar is just ethanoic acid in water. Now, this is in the table. You could get questions with an acid that isn't in your table, and you just use Bronze de Lowry theory. I do expect you to correctly transfer that H. Okay. COOH, you should understand carboxylic acids. And no, it's not H is bonded to C's that are acidic protons. So CH3COO minus. Now that guy's called acetate. It is in the polyatomic ion part of your booklet. And you will see the word acetate or potentially see it on tests or exams. And then you get your hydronium ion. No. One big thing you will be tested on is with amphiprotic species, can you label the correct one? Okay, and you need that to do the greater or less than 50%. So we have our ethanoic acid is there. And now which acid do I, which water do I need to label? Is it this one, which I'll call A, or that one B? Am I doing this one or that one for this equation? Is it this one? No, that's the acid water. I've got to, you know, factor in that water. It's above. The base is above the acid. The acid's lower, so this one's going to happen less than 50%. I'm not going to do the conjugate to the equilimla expression. You've, you've seen that. Okay. Uh, one last one that I'm going to put up for you to do that kind of has a bit of a, it's got a twist. Can you write the acid-base reaction if sodium nitrate is in water?
let's work through this. First, our labeling. You see sodium, you're not going to label that. You're hopefully not checking. Nitrate leads to two possible uh, labeling. And either I, I kind of take. The best thing to do with nitrate is not to label it. Okay? You see nitrate, and you might think, okay, it's in the base column, so you might stick a B there. It actually isn't going to cause you an error. Okay? It's not really a base, but if you label it, it'll get corrected. Okay? Or you could say, well, that's a conjugate of a strong acid, so I'm not even going to label it at all. Okay? Either way, we'll, be, we'll get the same answer. And then we've got water is an acid, and water could be a base. Okay? If you look for your strongest acid, well, there's only water, so water's going to win that. Our strongest base, okay, even if I leave nitrate in, I've got these two bases, okay, one of them which isn't even really a base. The lower one down is stronger, so that would be the water. So whether you label nitrate or not, water's going to win, so our strongest base is water. We've got that auto-ionization of water equation. Water is the acid, water is the base, and you get hydronium, and you get hydroxide. And, you know, that Kw, would, that equation, equilibrium constant would be Kw. Okay? This would be neutral. Okay? We're making hydronium, hydroxide, that'd be in equal amounts. This would be a neutral solution. We're not really going to study this very much. This is not an acidic or basic solution. This would be our oceans with a whole bunch of sodium chloride in them. Or if I dump salt in water, that's the only thing that's going to happen. So again, probably won't see this, but I threw it at you. How many had water in water? Okay, there tends to be a lot of errors, even in an AP class, when I put this one out. A lot of students who don't like water plus water, it has to be wrong and they want to throw nitrate in somehow. Okay.